Hi everybody, welcome to this week's Ghetto Vlog and uh, we're making a very early start. I've come to Doncaster Toy Fair, got a little man with me. Hi. Yeah man, we're excited. Um, the weather's just about stopped raining so let's see what we can go and find. Okay, we've only been here five minutes and uh, <laughs> I've got to head back to the car. Uh, drop off this big bag full. I think I've got an amazing deal. Um, we'll find out later. Retro Ghetto. Retro Ghetto, how are you yeah, doing, mate? Me. I'm good, man, are you? Yeah, good, yeah, I love the channel, mate. Thank you, man, I appreciate it. So much you forgot what it's called. Oh, mate, honestly, <laughs> I was like, you know, honestly, I don't know if you can give me a camera. I've got something for you, I wanted to give you if I ran into it. It's that for you. For me? That's got our Instagram and our uh, Facebook. Oh, I appreciate it, man, thank you and very much. It's for the show, so. Yeah, I'll show this on here then. I was literally thinking, like, probably you're going to have
I've never seen so many retro video games at one of these fairs in my life. So it's good to see, really good to see. Okay, so that was Doncaster Toy Fair and really enjoyed it. Now, in terms of video games, retro video games, probably the best toy fair I've ever been to. There were so many, as you guys have seen. Um, like a real mix as well, some real high-end stuff. There was that one stall. You know when you see Nintendo Cardboard in the acrylic cases, you know it means expensive, right? But my heart kind of did a flutter because I saw uh, a Ninja Warriors, which I need for the Super Nintendo, and I thought, oh, this is going to be expensive. Luckily for me, it was NTSC. But some really nice stuff throughout the day. I got some really good stuff, some absolute bargains, including that bin liner full as soon as I got there. We'll discuss all my stuff once we get back to the 3.0. Little man wants to show his find. So what did you get, mate? Um, I got a mini Armstrong and I got a Zelda. A Leo Armstrong, Lego, mm -hmm. and a Lego Zelda. 100% yep. official. Right, okay, so whilst we're here, um, it seems right to do the local CEX, right? So there's a Doncaster CEX. Also, we're so close to the doorway to darkness. The thing is, if I go there, right, if, if we've got time, it depends, we're a bit pushed for time. I spent all that money on that PS2 TV last week, and uh, if I go to Doorway to Dortmund, then I don't know if the same thing might happen again. But, um, you know, whilst we're in the area, it would be rude not to, I think, but we're going to head to CEX first, and then we'll see how we get on. Right, there's CEX. Hmm. Stand outside 10 minutes. <laughs> right, let's go see you. <laughs> Took your lace in. What? I'm leaving you.
like that. Do you think I'd look cool in that? Turn around. Whoa, that's cool. Love that. So we're at Mucky D's, little man's made a nice little display. It's like they're having a nice time, doesn't it? He broke his back. Yep. <laughs> so he got these from doorway to darkness. Uh, I'll show you my pickup when we uh, get back, of course, but quick, happy meal. Yeah. And then uh, we're gonna go back home. Yeah? Yeah. You had a good day? Yeah. So you, did you have a good day? Yeah. What's wrong? Shattered. Shattered? Hard life is game and toy hunting, isn't it? Yeah. Not as easy as you think. Yeah. Oh, it's a tough life, isn't it, mate? Yeah. You can walk home. See you in a bit. <sighs> well, that turned into quite the game hunt, didn't it? Um, firstly, proper welcome to this week's ghetto vlog and uh, yeah, I was supposed to just be nipping out to Doncaster Toy Fair, take little one out. It's the start of half term. And it turned into us being out for most of the day. Uh, he had a great day, bless him. So uh, yeah, that was all good. And I came back with some nice stuff, um, as you would expect from going to the fantastic places I ended up visiting. I think we'll start with CEX. I had managed to get myself a little CEX voucher. I had a charity shop find a couple of days before this trip. Nothing major, a couple of Xbox 360 games, I think it was Full Auto, uh, another game I can't quite remember. You might be seeing one other game in that pile that would have been worth picking up, like a one of them Monster High games, Two Ghoul for School, one of those. Uh, I think it sells for £8, trade in 5 But unfortunately by the time I got to the checkout, I opened it up and I could see that the disc was cracked. It was beyond scratched, it was cracked. So we left that one behind, took a couple of Xbox 360 games and traded them. Uh, at Doncaster CEX for this. Uh, a nice PS3 Essential, and that is Cars 2. 
uh, one that I've never seen before. So Cars 2 is a 2011 racer. Uh, it also got a 3DS and PSP release and it kind of mixes up spy sort of adventures and as you would expect racing. I heard very good things about Cars 3. Also came out on the PS3 I believe. I've got it on the Wii U of course. Um, never played it. I don't know if Cars 2 is also good, but yeah, from what I hear, they are quite fun racers. So it'd be interesting to test this one out. Uh, like I say, just an essential that I've never seen before. Uh, this was £8 and um, yeah, more than happy to add this to my collection. This was the only thing that I picked up from CEX Doncaster. And from there, um, as you would have seen, of course, I had to go and visit Doorway to Darkness. I was somewhat tentative after the uh, large purchase. You just can't quite see it. I don't know if you saw Wednesday's video. Um, but yeah, I picked up the Sony PS2 TV. But there's going to be more to come on this video about that because we've got to do some room rearranging, right, to get that in situ. But we'll get to that later on in the vlog. Um, but yeah, I went there. And of course, as always, fantastic uh, hospitality at Doorway to Darkness. Shout out to the owner. Uh, always great stuff on the shelves and um, I left with one item, but it's a, quite a big item. Um, I've been on a big Xbox 360 kick, right? So uh, this will come as no surprise to anybody. But this is the Lord of the Rings War in the North Collector's Edition. Now look at this. Look how cool this thing is, right? It's hard to show on camera because it is actually still sealed. So I'm trying to put some overlay out so you guys can see this. Uh, it's got a little bit of damage here in this corner. You can see it's took a knock, but... I got a fantastic prize for this, and I think that's sort of, it's offset by the fact that it's still sealed. Uh, I think if this wasn't sealed, I could easily just sort of pop that in and, and just like, you know, give that a bit more rigidity, but I'm happy enough for that tiny little dent, considering that it is still in its original packaging, and I got a very good price on it, as I say. Uh, the game itself um, is an action RPG hack and slash game developed by Snowblind Studios, came out in 2013. Um, it's an original story, so it's not one of the stories carried over from the trilogy of movies. It's like a three-player co-op combat. I think you can switch between different characters that, of course, have different abilities, but enough of all that, right? I didn't buy it for the game. Even though saying that, there's a fantastic steelbook in here. The steelbook itself sells for like £15 or so uh, on eBay. I bought it for this. Again, it's going to be difficult to see it through here, so I'll be showing you on screen, but... Oh, man. Th this is one of the best... Um, figurines I've ever seen in a collector's edition. I still believe to this day that my Assassin's Creed Odyssey statue is the best collector's edition statue ever released. I, I actually love that thing, but this is also fantastic. It's like a snow troll, I believe, uh, carrying one of the characters from the game, and yeah, just immense. Now, obviously, we're going to have to do yet more 360 shelf uh, arranging. Um, I've also got the bits that I bought from Vintage Gamer. So I've got the Borderlands 2 Collector's Edition and a few other things that we've got to try and make room for. So there's going to be a lot of uh, room arranging uh, on this vlog. Uh, and probably quite a sizable montage to come as well. But uh, yeah, really happy to have this. And uh, I think I know where this is going to go. Um, but yeah. That was Doorway to Dortness. It goes without saying, if you're ever in the Doncaster area, make sure you go and check those guys out. I will leave a link below to the Facebook page. So if there's anything that you saw in this video that you like, hit them up and I'm sure you can come to some sort of deal with them. So, where it all began, Doncaster Toy Fair. <clears throat> I've been before, been once before with Theo and the Slimehouse crew. And um, yeah, it was good, I enjoyed it. I thought it was really big. But this time round, blew that out of the water. And I think largely because of how many video games there were there. I could not believe how many retro video game items there were there. Uh, quite a few people said to me throughout the day, sort of, you know, I only bought these for you. Or, you know, people like, as I was browsing, came up to me and said, oh, there's no Super Nintendo. So it's great that people are watching the channel and have that like little bit of banter. Especially when you see like the retro gaming world merging more and more all the time with the toy world. I love looking at toys, I only buy so many because of like room and I don't want to delve down that rabbit hole. Uh, I could easily do so, believe me. Um, so yeah, when I go to these places and see so many retro video games, and not just like games, but real high-end stuff as you've seen on the video. Yeah, it's just uh, great to see. I did pick up uh, a couple of retro games whilst I was there. First one that I picked up, uh, there's a chap that had a store and um, he was selling off parts of his collection. He had quite a few things, but this one, it was just the right price, so yeah, had to pick this one up, and that is Mega Drive's Alien 3. This is a 1992 run and gun game developed by Probe Software, and you control Ellen Ripley. Plays very similar to the uh, Alien movie, and 
This game actually has 15 stages, which differs from the Super Nintendo uh, version of this game. I'm trying to look for it. I've got it somewhere. Here it is. Um, I think they're very different games because the Super Nintendo version, I believe, only has six levels, whereas this has 15. Uh, and this is uh, LJN, which uh, <laughs> not got the best reputation. I largely down to the angry video game nerd, right? But from what I understand, this is a fun game. It came out to a good reception and I got this for £10. Uh, it's got the manual. CEX sell this with manual for £20. So I mean, yeah, half price. I'll take that all day long. Uh, yeah, really happy to be adding this to my Mega Drive collection. Speaking of Mega Drive Collection, I also picked up this game, Shadow of the Beast 2. This is a platformer and originally it was like a 1990 release. It came out on the previous console, so you got like Amiga, Atari. There was a Mega Drive port, this one I think in 1992. And you play as a half beast and I think you're in search of your sister. I don't know too much about this game, I'm being honest. What I do know is that it cost me just £5. So yeah, Mega Drive game that I need for the collection for just £5 was never going to get left behind. So yeah, a great day all around in terms of uh, games that I was able to find. And I've got to give a massive shout out to Little Man. He was uh, on it for me. So I told him to look out for a couple of things because he loves Lego. And I told him to look out for anything for my army. I'm just scanning now trying to find uh, where it is. But we'll just use this one. Um, so there was a stall. You might have seen it on the footage. And I think it was two like minifigures for £5, something like that. And largely it was sort of, um, it wasn't Lego, it was sort of like fake Lego or unlicensed stuff, right, in, in the form of minifigures. Um, like, you know, different Nintendo characters or whatever it may be. But lurking amidst all of those was a Lego Medusa. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have one of these sent to me. So this will be my second one now. Um, I'm very much a man of symmetry, so when it comes to lining up my army, uh, I wanted two of these. So to pick one of these up for what is... Like what £2.50 and I would say these sell last time I checked for 10 times that on eBay so shout out to little man um great fire that was mate I had to convince him that he'd be better off with the Zelda one because I think he had eyes on this as well <laughs> uh, I, I don't feel guilty I don't care I'm all about my army <laughs> so yeah I ended up with that as well so shout out to him and uh, that takes me to uh, this Big bag, so you'll have seen on the footage, I had to go back to the car pretty early on, I'd only been in there five minutes, um, to put this back. Now, there's a lot of stuff in here, and I just want you to bear in mind that everything I pull out of this bag cost me £25. Uh, when I asked about this, the guy said 30 Now obviously you have to haggle a little bit. He said he'd do 25 and there was even more to this than I originally thought. Um, also from the same seller, sorry, I did pick up this. I picked up Jay-Z Volume 2 Hard Not Life for a pound, so another one for the hip-hop shelf. Um, but yeah, let's uh, get into this, shall we? Now, he was seemed like a genuine bloke. He said this is genuinely untested. Um, and he said, look, I'll be honest with you. If it didn't work, I'd tell you. And I mean, the price he gave me this for, even if it was untested or broken or spares and repairs, you'd probably get this for it. But anyway, so that is... <clears throat> What I believe is a full PlayStation VR set. Um, I mean, I'm sure you've all seen one of these before. I'm not going to pull every individual piece out of it. But it's got the, uh, the headset and the many, many wires. That's what kind of put me off owning one of these, was the amount of wires. Every time I went to play it, just the setting up the hassle of it, yeah, it just, it's just such a pain. Um, so, when I was looking in that bag, at what was in here, uh, I'm forgetting something, actually. We're going to come back to... Rem to say remind me <laughs> yeah, remind me <laughs> um so yeah when i was looking through all this one of the other things that i saw straight away which made me think yeah okay we're definitely buying this was these two ps move controllers now these are the ones which end the serial number ends in a two i believe uh yeah so it's like two e at the end now, what that means to me is that they're trading for more money. I think these are like £11 trading each. So straight away, you're £22 just in those. And as well as all of that, there's also a VR aim controller boxed um, in relatively decent condition. Certainly comparative to the state of the VR box. Um, I've not even opened this, but I can hear that it's in there. So what we're going to do shortly is sort of go through all of this. Um, make sure all the wires and everything are there. Then I'm going to calculate it up see exactly what CX will give me for all of this on the assumption that it's working 
and uh, we'll probably head down to my locals at some point on this vlog, trade it in and uh, maybe buy some more games along the way, right? Uh, so yeah, I think for £25, uh, that was a pretty, pretty much a bargain, but time will tell on that one uh, over the course of this vlog is how much of a bargain that was. And thanks for reminding me. <laughs> also at uh, Doorway to Darkness, I picked up PES 2012. So just for the grand sum of one pound, this is the latest Pro Evo that I needed for my full set. And I think I'm just about there now. Um, I don't think this is it, but there's only one or two more that I need. I'm at a point now where I'm gonna have to check because uh, yeah, it's very close to being completed. As I say, I've got 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, I believe. So yeah, really happy to add 2012. And there was only like one or two 360 Pro Evos on the shelf and it just happened to be the one that I needed. So yes, all in all, a fantastic morning out. Me and little man had a great day. Uh, he loves coming out hunting with me and uh, yeah, I enjoy going with him as well. So yeah, um, really, really good time. And to come back with all this fantastic stuff uh, of which I've got no room for. <laughs> is I guess somewhat of a bonus, but loads to come on this week's vlog. Like I said, we're gonna sort through the PSVR now. We will be heading to CX at some point, but there's gonna be a lot of work to do here in the 3.0. If I wanna accommodate my brand new spanking PS2 TV in here, I've got a loose plan, but uh, there's gonna be a lot of um, DIY and rearranging to get done before that. Also, I've gotta get that collector's edition of Lord of the Rings in somewhere as well. So yeah, loads to be cracking on with, but let's do it. Okay, so I've gone through all the PSVR stuff that I had. Everything seems to be here. Um, I actually underpriced the Move controllers. Um, these V2 ones actually get £16 trading each. So it's £32 trading there. This is £6 trading. So I'm already at 38 and I can't envisage there being a problem with that or these. They look to be in really nice condition. Obviously, the headset to some extent is a bit of an unknown. I'm sure they'll test that. Um, it's the newer model, um, but I don't really understand. The CX listings are a little bit all over the place in terms of like they all seem to be discounted or whatever. So I think minimum you're looking at is about 34 or something there. So all being well, um, the best part of like 70 quid trade in here. Worst case scenario, if there's an issue with this, then, you know, I'm looking at, like I say, uh, where were we? 32, like 38 pound trading. Um, and... You know theoretically something i could sell elsewhere if cx had just been picky so yeah i think i've got a really good buy there for 25 pound and as i say we're going to fly to cx later in the week so we'll figure it out then okay so before i can turn my attention to the ps2 tv i've got to get all this stuff put away right once we've got everything put away then we can look at moving and rearranging so cue the montage montage Okay, so that leaves 360. 
We do still need to sort out these Super Nintendo boxes. I've still got this box as well, but that's wrapped up in a bag because it's covered in mold. Hopefully we'll get to fixing these up on this week's vlog. If not, we'll do it next week. But as always, let's uh, rearrange the 360 area, shall we? So I think the obvious place to start is with the big War in the North Collector's Edition. Uh, now, this lower shelf here is the tallest of the shelves. And with there being a slight bit of damage on that side of the box, I think the best thing to do would be try and get this collector's edition here, because that'll pretty much hide the damage as well. And uh, yeah, something that big, it really needs to be down in the bottom corner. Damage will be hidden by my friend Ryu here that normally sits in this area. So yeah, I think that's the best place to start. Get War of the North in situ. Um, I'm hoping we can get a Borderlands in this gap here without too many issues and then uh, we'll take the rest from there. Okay, so I think everything is in how I want it to be. So, uh, as I said, I managed to get the Borderlands 2 uh, Special Edition in that gap there. I think that looks great. Like I said on Wednesday's video, I love the artwork, so it's great to have that on show. Um, there's been a lot of sort of move around. Uh, the biggest thing, obviously, is taking out Xbox One. That was an inevitability at some point. We will get that housed elsewhere in the room on this vlog. Um, what I have done is managed to create some space. So, War in the North's gone nicely down in that bottom corner, uh, as I predicted it would. We've got room here for some more big box bits. I've got room here for more sleeve covers. Um, I have moved some of this stuff. If you can see games sticking out on the edge, that's just to keep them from falling over. So here we've got Majin and the Force... <laughs> wow. Uh, Majin and the Forsaken Kingdom. I nearly called that something else. Uh, Majin and the Foreskin Kingdom would be a very different game, right? Um... <laughs> Yeah, moving on from Imagine in the Foreskin Kingdom. Uh, wow, yeah, moving on. Uh, we've got nice gaps everywhere to grow. Uh, I'm very happy with it. Yeah, man. Um, and like I say, we'll get Xbox One housed once we've got this beautiful specimen here in situ. So, yeah, let's just crack on and find the PS2 TV at home, shall we? Change of plans. I've decided to hit up my locals and CEX. I want to get the PSVR saga put to bed, right? Uh, I want to come out, get this done, so that I can focus all my attention on uh, rehousing the PS2 TV when we get back. Um, yeah, obviously, once I'm here, we'll hit up a few charity shops, see what we find. But yeah, I'm intrigued to see um, how profitable this purchase is going to be.
Okay, so that didn't work out too bad at all. Um, sadly, the actual PSVR headset had some like, bit of damage to the wire, so they weren't able to take that. So it could have been even more profitable. But because they're able to take both the controllers, the aim move controller, and the camera itself, I got like a 58 pound voucher, so more than doubled my money in a sense of the 25 pounds spent, so more than happy with that. Uh, I grabbed a couple of nice bits whilst I was there, which obviously I'll show you when we get back. Also had a notification that there's some parcels been delivered. Um, yeah, which I'm very excited to open. So let's get back, let's get into everything. And then we'll finally move this PS2 TV. Well, that was a resounding success, I think. Um, yeah, I got a nice voucher from CEX. I've still got the headset and I acquired a few nice bits along the way. There's loads of parcels. When I said that the postman had been, I didn't realize just how many parcels were here, um, including this huge one from the good folks over at Strictly Limited Games. So yeah, we're gonna get to that. But first things first, I wanna give a massive shout out, as I often do, to my man, CX Extraordinaire Manesh. Um, when I got there, he said he had a gift for me. This is something he'd mentioned before. He used to own the collector's edition to this, uh, and he said this was just basically taking up room. Asked me if I wanted it, and I said, yeah, I want it. So this is the lockbox from the GTA 4 special edition. Really nice, comes with a key. Uh, I'm not going to dive all just to what I'm going to be keeping in here. Uh, I'll let you use your imagination. But uh, yeah, this is something that I really like, and uh, I'll find somewhere in like a, the bottom of a cupboard or a drawer somewhere hidden out of the way for my Grand Theft Auto 4. Lock box, really like this. Um, yeah, it's in really nice condition as well. And there's actually a couple of games in here that I picked up during my trip to CEX. And I'm gonna talk about them a different day because uh, yeah, we'll get to that on another video. So that will all become clear very soon. I need to give a shout out to Matt. So a few times now I've popped into my local CEX. Uh, I've never bumped into Matt, but he does sort of like, he watches the channel I assume. And uh, he'd left this for me behind the counter. So it's just cause two uh, PS3 Essential. He's donated quite a few essentials now to my Essentials collection. I do already have this one, but it is much appreciated. Uh, as I say, any duplicates are going in a nice sizable pile. And we're going to do a big giveaway uh, here on the channel uh, for somebody else and help them out with their PS3 Essentials collection. So Matt, if you are watching, it's much appreciated you doing this. And hopefully one day I'm going to run into you. Hopefully our paths will cross because like I keep saying, I'd love to thank you in person for your generosity. So shout out to Matt once again for that. And as I say, we'll get to the other games on another video. But there's loads to be getting into. There's loads of parcels here. But before I get into those parcels... Right, okay. So last week, you may remember, um, Stuart donated a copy of iPad, uh, PS3 Essential. And he messaged me one evening. And he said, did you get the Lego minifigure? And I said, what Lego minifigure? And he said it was in the packaging with the iPad game and I was like no and it dawned on me as he was messaging me this is like quite late in the evening my black bin was out for collection I thought oh no I had to go out in the rain dig through my black bin to try and find this uh packaging that he'd sent the game in luckily it wasn't too hard to find it was somewhere near the top retrieved it pulled it out and managed to find the minifigure that was inside so once again big shout out to Stuart uh, now this minifigure is very cool actually I didn't even this isn't, wasn't one of my radar. This isn't uh, something that I even knew existed, to be honest. So I think this is what they are calling a Battle Goddess. I think that's the official name for this. Uh, as you can see, really cool minifigure. Um, so yeah, this is the Battle Goddess. It was part of the Series 12 uh, blind bags. And yeah, just really cool. Um, comes with like a cloth skirt. And as you can probably see on the detailing, there's a Pegasus. Um, so this, yeah, it's basically a Greek goddess, I believe. Let me just put all the accessories on her. So yeah, I didn't know I needed this, but now I think I might be collecting these for the army as well, because, yeah, a, a nice little section of these would look great in the army, I think, right? So yeah, really happy with that. So massive shout out to Stuart. It's a shame I had to go digging through the bin for it, but uh, yeah, I'll have to check the bags more diligently going forward. So we'll put that down there. There's quite a few figures now building up to uh, add to the army. And I do have a plan to make it a little bit bigger. So what I like to do is drop the shelf, put some trunk in, the same trunk in that we use for the shelf hacks, and then run another row of that Lego tape and then have like a secondary row behind it. But we'll get to all that another day. We've got plenty to be cracking on with here. So uh, we've got quite a few gifts, but before we get into that, I do have a couple of eBay purchases. 
I know the first two are nothing exciting, not to most people watching anyway. Uh, so the first one is FIFA 16. Now, if you watched last week, you will know that I said that the FIFA games on PS3 Essentials are hard to find because they never came out in the UK. There's only certain European regions uh, where the FIFAs were released as part of the Essentials line. This, I believe, is... I think it's Dutch. Uh, it's, the language on it is French and Dutch, um, from what I can see, look, on the back. But uh, it wasn't cheap to get these two. So this was FIFA 16. And the next one here is FIFA 15 in an upside down case. <laughs> I thought it looked weird, right? Uh, yeah, so FIFA 15, FIFA 16. They were big on Messi, weren't they? <laughs> Throughout Europe. This guy was selling games everywhere. Um, yeah, it cost me about a combined 20 pounds to get these. And I think there is still maybe one or two more that I need. But yeah, if you go for the full essential set, these are just games that you need to get. And like I said, they just were never available in the UK. So it's nice to get these because I envisage that these will be getting hard to find and probably quite expensive uh, in the not too distant future should more and more people be collecting PS3 essentials, which seems to be the case. Um, I know there's a few uh, members of the Ghetto Gang. Shout out to the Ghetto Gang on the Discord that are collecting essentials. And just the fact that I see less of them on the shelves in CEX suggests to me that there are a few people out there. So let me know in the comments if you're one of the people hunting down PS3 Essentials. Uh, okay, so this is a gift. I fixed my knife, by the way. You'll be good to know if you watched the recent vlog where I nearly took my finger off. Right, what have we got here? I don't know what this is. Ah, there's a note. Always send a note. Okay, hey Callum, here's a small token of appreciation for providing great content on your channel. I've been watching for years now and got hooked when the 3.0 was being built. Thank you very much. Uh, that is much appreciated. Uh, keep up the great work, Lewis at Liquid Tune. PS, feel free to read out on the vlog if you wish. Well, I've just done that to Lewis, so thank you very much. In all the excitement of opening parcels, I forgot to show what Lewis sent. Uh, it's this VHS of WWF No Mercy, 1999. This was like peak era for me when I was younger watching this. My man Stone Cold there. Uh, I try and tell people I'm not collecting VHS, but then people keep sending me such cool ones like this that the collection keeps growing. But yeah, much appreciated, mate. I think quite a few people found the channel when I was building the room. And uh, yeah, it was really... Yeah, I look back on that. That was in some ways the birthplace of these vlogs because the first sort of like quote unquote vlogs that I did were the, the room build vlogs and then it just sort of like grew from there. So yeah, shout out to Lewis for that. And in terms of like building the room, guys, make sure you go and check out uh, a YouTube content creator called Brad, B W E R A D. I'll put a link below. He's actually building his own game room right now as well. Uh, he's doing it better than me because he's doing it like himself. He's From what I've seen, he's pretty much done it all with his bare hands. I don't have the DIY skills, as I'm sure you would know if you watch this channel for any amount of time. Um, but yeah, uh, so if you're hungry for game room builds, uh, go and check out Brad, the top guy. He's also doing like, a, I think he's going for the full N64 set. So then we're bereft of N64 content on this channel, right? Because I don't collect for it. So yeah, if you like N64, you like video game rooms being built, check out Brad. There'll be a link in the description below to his channel. Right, okay, so this next one, I know what this is. So... I had these gifts generally sent generously sent across by Matt. So Matt's viewer channel reached out to me. Uh, he said he had a surprise for me. He thinks it's something I like given my current collecting habits, which I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of them, right? It could be anything. Uh, but then he also mentioned to me that he had this game and he asked if I had it. And I said, no, um, it's one which I am now currently in the market for. And what I didn't realize at the time was he was basically asking me if I wanted it. Um, and he said, I've added it to the order. So massive shout out for Matt and his generosity on this. You'll see why in a second. Um, so we'll get to the next one after this because I don't know what that is. But this, honestly, Matt, top, top man. Much appreciated. So this is Spec Ops The Line. Now, um, if you don't know, this game has been in the news a lot lately. This has caused quite a bit of controversy. Um, and that's because it's been removed from uh, all digital storefronts. I think there was a, a music licensing issue. I've not looked too much in depth into it. Um, but all I know is I got FOMO, like a lot of people, right? A lot of collectors, people like myself, have the collector's disease. Once something um, gets removed, you tend to want it. And then the price of the physical copy skyrocketed. It went from being like a four or five pound game to like a 35 pound game pretty much overnight. Every copy on CEX sold out. 
before I could get to it, unfortunately. And um, the other thing that sort of made me want it was a lot of people in the comments and people that were discussing it said it's actually a really good game, a really fun game. So that made me think, oh, now I really want it. Um, I was kind of kind of hope and wait and see if the price settles down because it usually does in these kind of extreme cases. But yeah, the massive thank you to Matt and his generosity for sending this my way because, yeah, like I say, like a lot of collectors, once something becomes unobtainable or expensive, you, you tend to want it more. This is a game that I wasn't even aware of prior uh, to it being in the news. Um, but yeah, massive shout out to Matt for this one and uh, I will be playing this before too long based on all the recommendations I've had. Uh, since it sort of like, you know, became newsworthy. So yeah, shout out once again to you. And uh, let me know in the comments if you played this one and is it as good as people say it is or is it just a case of people jumping on the, uh, the bandwagon with that one. And then we get to this. So this is what Matt was originally sending me. He basically, I think he said it's a collector's edition or something. He just said giving you recent habits. So I've got no idea. I asked him what it was and he said I think it'd be better off as a surprise. So let's find out together, shall we? Right, we've got a note. I'm not gonna look, I'm not gonna look. Ah, oh, so this is like a CEX order. Hang on. Ah, oh, top man. Okay, so you'll have to let me know, Matt. Have you ordered this for me? Or was this like something you owned and you just like kept it in the packaging? I'm so happy to have this. I'll explain why in a minute. So that is Soul Calibur 5, the collector's edition. I love this collector's edition. Um, I love these like old leather bound book looking collector's editions. Now, I bought this on the PlayStation 3, I think by mistake. So I already had the um, Fable 3 one, which has this leather bound sort of side art. And I thought to myself, oh, I'd love to have them all. It looked like a library. This was a couple of years ago when I was in the like retro get of 2.5, I believe. So I kind of bought the PS3 one and then it kind of dawned on me that oh, I bought this on the PS3. The Fable one's on the Xbox 360. They're not even on the same console. Am I going to display them together? And now with obviously me sort of like really going down this Xbox 360 rabbit hole, especially with collector's editions, there was always that part of me that thought, oh, I'd like to have this on the 360, not the PS3. But then it's like, are you going to spend the money to buy it again when you've already bought it on the PS3? Do you know what I mean? It just became one of them weird collector kind of like, uh, things I was running through my mind thinking oh, I'm gonna have to address this one day but no longer do I have to do that Matt just top man fantastic two fantastic pieces that you've sent to me and I can't thank you enough um so yeah let's just show everybody uh, obviously I know what's inside here so it's Soul Calibur 5 I'm a big one-on-one -on -one fight collector especially with me having the kiosk I always say it I'm trying to go for all the one-on-one -on -one fighters so it's got a making of DVD of course got the game itself and then there's like art cards an art book uh, postcards <laughs> my favorite right so yeah the art book yeah just awesome awesome love the fact that it's like this leather band book and i love the fact that i can now put it side by side with fable if i'm not mistaken memory serves me right there's another one there's one other game which um looks like this but I think it was very expensive, somewhat uncommon. From what I can remember, I'll have to do some digging now. Because um, like most things in life, when I get something cheap or free or as a gift, it usually leads to me spending more money ultimately because, yeah, collector's disease, right? But uh, yeah, massive, massive shout out to Matt. I'm delighted with that. Thank you very much, my friend. Um, so that is everything. Apart from this huge box yeah, that I've been sent by the good folks over at strictly limited games um okay let's get into this shall we i'm gonna give a shout out to david over at strictly limited i know he watches the channel a massive shout out to you sir okay oh looks like christmas let's see what we've got Right, okay. Where to start? <laughs> right. 
we're going to start right here with Rolling Gunner. So Strictly Limited have introduced what they are calling Game of the Month. Um, what they do is they select one game each month and then that will be reduced by 25%. Um, for the month of February, it's Rolling Gunner. And obviously with it being a shmup, it's right on my street. Uh, this is available both on the Switch and the PS4. And like I say, it's discounted for the remainder of this month. This is a Strictly Limited Games exclusive. This version is limited to just 2,000 numbered pieces. It's a Neo Retro shooter featuring online high scores and it also includes uh, Overpower, which I believe was the DLC for Rolling Gunner. And yeah, man, uh, this looks really cool. Like, I don't know if I'd go as far as to call it a bullet hell. You'll be seeing the footage on screen now, but the fact they're calling it a Neo shooter, it's a modern retro shooter, basically. So that's right on my street. Uh, anything that's sort of like, like Andro Dunos 2, you know, something which has that modern sheen, but also that kind of like retro simplicity to it is exactly what I want from a schmuck. So let's get into this and see what we've got. Um, I'll take the sleeve off. And as always, I love those little magnetic flaps. And then as we get inside it, we have got a Rolling Gunner and Overpower Snow Globe. Never seen one of these before in a collector's edition. Okay. Ah, oh, see what they've done here. That's pretty cool to be fair. So like the pink pieces in the snow globe are obviously like the bullets, like it would be in a bullet hell. I like that. I like things that you can actually display with your games, right? So that's nice. So then we're getting onto a good start here. And then we've got the Rolling Gunner and Overpower original soundtrack CD. We've got uh, some badges, a keyring, an art book. I was gonna say postcards, but I think these are actually stickers. Let's put a few of them in here. Really nice, large hardback art book. Like I said, it's just one of them games that like really Makes me want to play it. Some shmups I'm kind of on the fence, I don't know, you know like a lot of the bullet hells and stuff, they're not really my bag, but this one as soon as I saw it I thought yeah, that could be something that I enjoy. Similar to that Drainus, I really enjoyed that as well. And a nice poster. We've got Rolling Gunner, so there's like a vertical poster, and a horizontal as well. I'm gonna do that off camera. It's so annoying, right? Posters, you know, you're trying to fold them back the way in which they came. It's never as easy as you think it's gonna be, is it? And here's the game itself, Rolling Gunner and Overpower. So let's have a quick look inside the, uh, the game case. Yep, full color manual, as always with Strictly Limited Games. Or is it a manual? This like opens out. It's like a manual, but it opens out. I'm not going to get another poster on the go. <laughs> I've already got one I've got to put back. But basically, from what I've seen of that, it's got like all the button moves and everything, which is cool. And uh, yeah, man, absolutely delighted with that. This is one that I'm going to be playing very soon. My short backlog, to be fair, is getting ridiculous. Because I like to like finish one before I start another one. And I always like to have a shmup on the go. I'm not good at them. So it takes me a long time to finish one. So like the... The amount that I've got, when I look at my Mega Drive schmups and then the fantastic releases that I've got on the Switch, there's so many that I need to get to, but yeah. Oh, pop that down without breaking it. Okay, so from there, and like I say, that is available. I last checked, there was 35% of the stock left, but order before February and you'll receive a discount. Ah, oh, here's all my postcards, look. <laughs> Had to be, right? Had to be. Uh, so as well as the game of the month, they are also offering discounts on bundles. So if you go on the Strictly Limited Games website, of course the link will be below. They're bundling together certain collector's editions and certain games that are sort of like related to one another, where they will be sort of like the same um, category of games. In this case, spoiler alert, shmups. And then they're sort of like doing them at a reduced cost. So, I've been sent 
the Cosmic Revelations special edition, and then we'll get to the next bit in a second. So I love this. So these come in like, make sure I don't damage my poster. These come in this like, I think this is like what an old arcade PCB would come in, is that right? I'm not an expert when it comes to those things. But yeah, this is the big box version of Cosmic Revelations. So I do actually have Cosmic Revelations, the game itself, but I really wanted this big box version. And in here, there are loads of additional goodies. So I've got, oh, this is nice. That's really nice. So I've got like a nice pin badge. There's Arius Odyssey Cosmic Voyager. I don't even know what this is. Just like a real in-depth guide to the games by the looks of it. And then there's more stuff in the bottom. Ah, so I think these are like coasters. Obviously you guys will be seeing this all like as overlay. Whilst I sit here and eulogize about what only I can see and you can't. Right, okay. So that's all cool. And then we have <clears throat> the box itself. So, I've got a bit of a collection going now when it comes to strictly limited schmuck big boxes. So I've already got Drainus, I've already got Death Smiles 1 and 2, uh, and now with me adding Rolling Thunder and uh, Darius Cosmic Revelation. And what I would say is, guys, grab these whilst you can because there is a, a Darius version. There was the arcade and console compilations released by Strictly Limited a while ago. And I really want it. I really want it. They had it in um, Doorway to Darkness. I'll be throwing the footage again now. And it's like £200 now. And that's not like an inflated price in the shop. Like That's how much it's worth. That's how much it's selling for. I wish I'd bought that on its release. So yeah, don't make the same mistake I did. If you want these games, just grab them while they're available. Um, so this is the Darius Cosmic Revelation, as I say. Now, let's find the game itself. There's a lot to get through. Wait. <laughs> right, okay. So, there's the game itself. Uh, so, this contains uh, Darius Burst EX Plus, another Chronicle. Now, I think that is the arcade game. I played this in Leeds, the one where you can sit down with like four players on a really like long wide screen. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. Um, it also contains the Sagaya, which is the Game Boy release. I actually randomly was playing this the other night. I was talking to Ross over at Baha ha Gaming about that. And uh, yeah, um, just a fantastic compilation of Darius games. What else have we got in here then? So we've got Darius the Omnibus 3, Serendipity. So I'm assuming that is the soundtrack. One of them like cool mobiles that you can make. Again, nice display pieces. What is this? A Blu-ray? This is a remastered version of Darius Burst and Other Chronicle Live. Oh, so it's like a live performance of the music? I'm not exactly sure what that is, but it's a Blu-ray. We've got Darius Burst, Another Chronicle. And then it gives you all the information on there. If I had more time, I would <laughs> spend more time to look at each of these. <laughs> this vlog will be about five hours long. And then we've got this, um, which again, it looks like some sort of like advertisement or something. A little bit more information about some of the characters from the game. Yeah, so just awesome, awesome stuff, right? And uh, yeah, highly recommend this. As I say, I've been putting a bit of time into that compilation recently. Um, if I'm being honest, the some of those latter games are in that sort of in-between period, that arcade sort of like, I think in and around Dreamcast era where it's not my preferred graphics of a shmup, but great games. And the fact that you've got the Game Boy game included uh, is a nice touch as well. And what is right up my street, because as I say, that was part of a bundle, is this. So it was bundled with this. Okay, we've got another sticker here and a Strictly Limited sticker. But this is what I've really been looking forward to. So this is Darius Extra version for the Sega Mega Drive. So this is a modern retro release in every sense of the word, right? Um, you can see on the side, it's got the Strictly Limited sticker as opposed to 
the Sega sticker. Let's see if you can peel it off. No, I'm gonna have to cut it. Right, okay, so in here, as I say, we've got Darius Extra version. Now, this is the arcade game uh, bought to the Sega Mega Drive. Um, from what I understand, it's had it's like it's been altered in such a way that any bugs have been fixed, any sort of like um, gameplay imbalances have been sorted out. It's basically the best version of that game and available to play at home on your Mega Drive. Comes with a nice full color manual. And uh, yeah, whilst obviously this isn't one of the Mega Drive schmops that I'm going for a complete set of, it's gonna sit alongside them nicely. A game I just can't wait to play. This is my era when it comes to shorts, I'm not gonna lie. This kind of 16-bit graphics, um, yeah, I don't know what it is. I think it's just timeless, and it just suits shmups down to the ground, in my opinion. So yeah, absolutely delighted with that. Once again, a massive shout out to the whole team over at Strictly Limited Games. Thank you very much. There will be a link in the description box below. I keep trying. <laughs> this is very much first world problems. I keep trying to get this PlayStation 2 TV set up, and now I'm looking at my room thinking, there's a lot of tidying up to do. Probably another montage that could be done, but I'll save that for next week. Uh, right, let's get tidied up and let's finally give this PS2 TV a home, shall we? Good morning all, and a full, what, 48 hours later than I had planned. It's finally time. So, with regards to this PS2 TV, um, I had quite a lot of people ask me in the comment section of Wednesday's video how much I paid for this, which is completely understandable, given uh, <laughs> I think the title of the video was uh, my most expensive video game hunt ever, which it was. Um, I didn't purposely omit the price, it's just something that I forgot to mention on the video itself. So, um, obviously I bought quite a lot of things from Vintage Gamer, but I think this worked out to be around £320, which is um, a large amount of money, don't get me wrong. I've sort of been waiting to make a large purchase since I sold a lot of things in this room last year. So I sold a lot of standees, I sold kiosks, I sold a lot of my toys, I sold all my Street Fighter um, Storm collectibles. A lot of that money went to real world boring stuff, house renovation, family, etc. But I did keep a bit aside for uh, a large purchase to come back into my collection and this was said purchase. Um, £320, if you look, is a very good price. I think you could easily spend £100 more, uh, maybe even more than that. Um, I think I've seen them sell for up to like 450 especially in this condition with the complete remote. Um, as I say, these remotes are quite difficult to find. And uh, yeah, just very, very happy with my purchase. But to really enjoy it to its fullest, we've got to move it. It does look pretty cool here, right? Uh, it fills that gap nicely. Obviously, I'd hide the wire. But it just doesn't really have much functionality. I don't want this purely as a collection piece. I don't want it as a display piece. I want to be able to use it. Um, and I would never really use it, right, in that position there. I'm not going to stand here uh, playing PS1 or PS2. So, I do have a loose plan, which I'm hoping is going to work. Because <laughs> if it doesn't work, I don't know what I'm going to do. So, as you can see, this is my gaming area. This is where I sit. And I'm perfectly located for the three screens. So I've got my 55-inch um, Sony OLED up there, which obviously I do my modern gaming on. Got the, I believe that's a 32-inch Bang & Olufsen, which I do my retro gaming on. And I've got a monitor there, which I play my Switch on whilst I'm watching uh, something on the larger television. And this can switch around for Tate mode, etc. So there is functionality to every screen uh, in this room. So, with this being my quote-unquote command center <laughs> it needs to be somewhere where I can maintain my seating position but still utilize it so the plan is to put it into this section here so what I'm thinking is if I drop PlayStation 1 down to above PS2 so that should take us to this kind of height here right now that will be about perfect in terms of me sitting here and having the PS2 TV in this section at a slight angle. But yeah, it should give me perfect functionality. This is all in theory. Obviously, it's untested at the moment. 
Uh, obviously, Lego Army, Switch games, etc. are all going to have to be rehoused, but that's not a problem. We'll do that, no problem. So, that's my job now, to crack on, get this sort of rearranged to how I think it'll work, and then, yeah, take it from there. Okay, so that's phase one complete. So, again, theoretically, as I sit here, it should be able to give me a nice bit of functionality. My concern is the depth of this shelf. Um, because of the base being a PS2, it's quite thick, so it depends what angle it's gonna allow me to sit it on. The beauty of the PS2 TV is it's just one plug, right? So I can easily just um, drill a hole in the bottom corner of this unit and then wire the plug through. I've got a, a connection that you can just see down there. So I think the only way to do it is to test it, right? see there's just there's nowhere near enough angle now theoretically I could cut small slot out of this back piece here to allow that protruding section to sit more flush to hopefully try and push this back to here but again, whether that'll be enough, I'm not sure. Back to the drawing board. You know where Daddy should put his PS2 TV. Do ya? You'll know it. Okay, so, the original plan was never gonna work. Um, I was naive to think I could put this at the right angle, given the depth of the unit. Now, even if I cut a hole, there's only like an inch and a half between that backing piece and the wall. So unless I'm gonna cut a hole in the external wall, I'm never going to get the angle I want. So, I've had a bit of an idea. It might be a ridiculous idea, but it's a bit of an idea nonetheless. So, my thought is, I could potentially take this unit and spin it out this way. So it creates, um, you know, like a bit of an area here. Okay, you with me? Uh, and then, this would have a shelf level there, and this could sit here at an angle. So when I sit here, I'd have the perfect angle of the PS2 TV and I'd be enclosed and encased by different screens and televisions and I think it'd feel awesome to sit here. It wouldn't be too, um, what would be the right word? It wouldn't block coming into the room too much because it would only stick out to there and I had a similar issue when I had the arcade machine in here, etc. So it's worth testing out. The issue would be what it would look like here. Because obviously if I've got the back of the unit sticking out, um, it's a bit of an ugly thing to look at. But, could I kill two birds with one stone? If I put that there, I would potentially have more space here, of which I could maybe f put another unit in, which would allow me to have more storage, and cover the back of the ugly unit. So, again, it's just an idea it might be poor in reality, but it's worth a shot. Right, so the more I think about that idea, the more I think it won't actually work. Um, of course, these are all attached now. I'd have to disattach it, so it's not as easy as just quickly having a look, see what it would be like. But theoretically, if I switch this unit here out and put it in that corner, so basically pivoted it from this corner here, it would be beneficial in the sense of I'd get that much space back, but it would stick out to there, which it's going to be probably close the room off a bit too much as you walk in, right? And also, in doing so, you can have the back of the unit on display. So I'd have to get a piece of um, 
this white MDF, which isn't the end of the world, but it would be quite hard, I think, to balance it because there's not really anything for it to join onto. And in terms of putting another unit here, I'd only have this much room to play with, so I wouldn't really have the ability to do much with it. Uh, obviously, you can get something custom made, um, get somebody to come in, but then you're looking at more expense, more hassle for something which might not be the most practical solution. I like the thought of sort of sitting here and having this wrap around and having the TV there, TV there, TV there, TV there, and just like having everything available to play. But I just, I think there's more questions than answers if I try and go that route. So yeah, as you can probably hear, I'm scratching my head right now. Okay, so I wanted to at least test the theory so I could eliminate it from my mind. And uh, yeah, it just doesn't work, does it? Sometimes you have to see these things in reality. It doesn't even look great. In terms of like the practicality, it's fantastic. It's able to play it, but because of the quite short length of the base, the PS2 Slim, it just doesn't look right. Um, not to mention all the assholes that we would have trying to make the back of this look decent and fill that gap. So at least we can uh, say we tried and turn our attention elsewhere. Although it does actually look better up top but I don't want to encroach on my snares wall. Right, let's get the units back. It's another hour wasted. Right, okay, so as you've just seen, I've tried every conceivable way to get this PS2 TV in this room, and currently, it's right back where it started. However, I do think I finally found its home. So. If we look where the Switch Games and All Stars Shrine is, I'm going to remove that and put my PS2 TV there, put it up as high as I can, and then ultimately I'll be able to use it when I rest my head here. So when I lay on my sofa, I'll have the playability of it right there, um, level with the sofa itself. And it's imperative that I get to use this, guys. I don't just want it to be a part of the collection. I want this to have the functionality. Also, it has to look good. Um, nothing in this room. Uh, is worth sacrificing the overall aesthetic and feel of this room that I've worked so hard um, to be, get happy with, right? So, I think that's the solution. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of things then rehome. I've already moved the Wii U games because I was a bit concerned about the end of the Wii U section, which was here, but they've dropped down nicely onto the end of the GameCube shelf, separated by the old Mario shampoo bottle. So, yeah, I, I think we finally got our plan. Let's get it into action. <laughs> Right, okay, finally, the PS2 TV as a home. Ah, yeah, I mean, obviously it needs like straightening up and sorting out, but it's going to live there. Uh, obviously, I've moved PS2 from there to there. I just wanted to have it sort of, you know, it just made sense to have the PS1 and PS2 games in and around the console. I mean, the TV, or both, should I say. Uh, I currently got Kratos standing next to it. He fills that gap nicely, but I'm tempted to potentially drop this down a little bit further and then I could put my Lego army uh, at the top there. I just think it'd be nice to have something just to separate the gap and almost like house the TV a little bit more, right? Just keep it enclosed. Also, what this is going to do is give me a nice um, backdrop for when I'm doing my pickups and stuff on the vlog. So I'm often sat here uh, filming via the snares table and it'd be nice to have like the background of games playing in here so yeah i'm um, happy with that happy we've got a location for the television what i'm going to do now is get a hole drilled in the back so that we can get the plug through run it round, and then obviously it's in its forever home at that point as you can see there's loads that we need to do uh, loads of rearranging yeah <laughs> Thank you. 
And that is gonna do it for another. Ah! <laughs> what a way to uh, end the vlog. Standing on something you don't want to be standing on drill bits. Right. <laughs> what I was gonna say is that's gonna do it for this week's ghetto vlog. And uh, besides that mishap, what a week it's been filled with. Yeah, amazing additions. Uh, kicked it off right back at the toy fair. Great weekend. Um, yeah, just another happy, uh, great week, really. We keep rolling on. Um, make sure you tune in to next week's episode because I'm going to have to sort the rest of this room out, right? There's a lot of um, rehousing to do to make way for the PS2 TV. Also, I've got a big update, a very um, good update as well, on the Neo Geo Pocket that I found at the Leeds Toy Fair. So, uh, yeah, I'll be updating all you guys on that next week as well. Um, I know this has probably been a very long vlog due to how busy of a week it's been. So let me know in the comments if you stuck around to the end. It is much appreciated. If you're new here or for whatever reason you're not subscribed, when I check analytics, it says like it's only like half of you are subscribed. So, you know, it doesn't cost anything. It helps me out. It keeps me doing this. So if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. Just hit that button. And uh, yeah, we'll do this again next week. I'll see you then. Play your games. Keep it retro in a bit. Retro ghetto. <laughs> Lock into the retro ghetto. Oh.